Welcome to the unit Export Merchandising. In this unit, you will understand the role of merchandiser in an export house. This unit comprises of 7 modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. By the end of this unit, students will be able to describe coordination, follow up and facilitation functions of a merchandiser in an export house. Describe the process of preparation of time and action plan, TNA plan spreadsheet. List the various approvals needed from a buyer and the role of export merchandiser. Describe the types of testing and their significance in quality assurance. Describe batch planning process and the role of export merchandiser. Outline quality audits and the final statistical audit. Outline vendor compliance and its importance. Describe the vessel planning process for shipping the goods. The first module gives an overview, coordination, follow-up and facilitation functions of a merchandiser in an export house. The basic functions of an export merchandiser are to coordinate, follow-up and facilitate. The merchandiser plays a central role in an export house. Here, by export house, we generally mean garment manufacture export house. From the time the order is given by the buyer till the time it is shipped out and reaching buyer's warehouse, export merchandiser needs to coordinate with various internal departments on one hand and with the buyer or buying house merchants on the other hand. This coordination role is very crucial and important to ensure that the order is produced and shipped on time with required quality and quantity, thus ensuring the right product with right price, right time and right place. Export merchandiser needs to follow up the status of all the orders that he or she is responsible. Follow-up is very crucial for timely detection of delays or problems that would create delays in producing and shipping the orders. A regular and daily follow-up of status of all the orders is one important part of export merchandiser's role. The next logical function of the export merchandiser is to facilitate the process. If he or she sees any problem during a follow-up, immediate action to solve the problem is required to be done. For example, if the fabric is getting delayed, then use the cushion time in the plan. If that is exceeded, then see how production can be hazened by increasing the number of batches so that the order can be shipped before cancel date. Each problem may require a new solution as it may or may not have precedent. This module focuses on the factors influencing time and action plan and the significance of TNA for merchandisers. One of the foremost and primary functions of the export merchandiser is to prepare a time and action plan for all the actions required for successful execution of manufacture export order received from the buyer. The action plan includes timelines for various approvals to be taken from the buyer or buying house, various sourcing activities like fabric etc cutting, sewing and finishing of garments, packing and various quality audits, shipping, etc. Various sourcing operations 
approval activities and garmenting and logistic operations and their timelines would influence the time and action plan or TNA. TNA is very significant for export merchandiser because it provides basic framework of time and basis for follow-up function of the export merchandiser. Now, let us look at the approvals that need to be taken from the buyer or buying house merchants. An export merchandiser needs to get various approvals from the buyer or buying house merchants. These include approvals for proto samples, size set samples, fabric samples, pre-production approvals, trim approvals, etc. Let us now learn about these. Proto samples are the very first set of samples or samples made as per buyer specifications and measurements. This is usually made using substitute fabric which is close to the original intended fabric in terms of count, construction and texture. Then size set samples are the set of one sample each, one sample in each size that are going to be made. These are generally made from the original fabric using the initial fabric received from the fabric supplier. When developing a new fabric as per the artwork and color standards given by the buyer, a fabric sample is developed and sent to the buyer for approval. It may be approved in one go or may go for many revisions before a final approval is given. In case of and dyed fabric, the sample is called table loom or TL in short. In case of a solid dyed fabrics, the sample is called lab dip or LD in short. In case of prints, the sample is called strike off or SO in short. A set of samples known as pre-production samples incorporating the revision suggested by the buyer in proto samples and size set samples are sent to buyer for approval before starting with bulk production of garments. Some buyers may alternately go for pilot run with buyers quality auditors monitoring the same for quality and giving necessary suggestions to the production team. A buyer may insist on approving various trims like threads, labels, zippers, buttons, lace or the embroidery work etc. These trims may be sent to the buyer for approval as suggested before starting the production of the garments. This module examines the importance and need for testing products. Testing of piece goods as well as final garments is an important requirement by the buyers. Many of the buyers require that the testing is done by a third party lab indicated by the buyer and the lab sends one copy of the report directly to the buyer. Patent defects are those defects which can be detected by the naked human eye through inspection. For example, defects like missing pick, hole in the fabric, etc. Latent defects are those defects which cannot be detected by naked human eye but will be detected through usage or lab test. For example, defects like color fading to light, low durability, etc. Testing is required to find out the latent defects which are not visible to the naked eye but will come out with the usage of the product. In order to ensure that the products made by the vendors do not have latent defects in them, buyers are now insisting on testing. Piece goods that is fabrics are tested before bulk production of garments. Fabrics are tested for various latent defects like color bleeding, 
low color fastness to light, low fabric strength, etc. The fabric sample is sent to the testing lab from initial lot of fabric received from the fabric supplier. Garments are also tested for parameters like seam strength, fabric strength in the garment, etc. Garment samples from the initial production lot are sent to the lab for testing. Another important task to be done by the export merchandiser along with factory manager is planning the production of garments. This module focuses on importance of production planning. Finishing follows sewing. So the finishing and packing plan follows sewing plan. What is planned to shoes today is planned for finishing and packing for tomorrow or the day after. Similarly, the entire finishing and packing plan follows sewing plan. Maybe with one day cushion. If there is embroidery on the garment, then there is a need to plan embroidery activity also. Mostly embroidery is done after cutting and before sewing. Accordingly, embroidery plan precedes sewing plan and succeeds cutting plan. So planning done in such a way that the quantity that is cut, embroidered and sewn per day tallies. If the order involves washing, whether it is a denim wash or softener wash, then wash plan also made. Washing is done after sewing and before finishing. So wash plan follows sewing plan and what is sewn today is planned for washing tomorrow. It may use in-house or outsourced washing capacity. Wash plan precedes finishing plan. Export merchandisers shall work on in close coordination with factory and production teams and develop cut plan, finishing plan, embroidery plan and wash plans. Vessel planning involves planning for shipping up for goods. Based on the planned completion of packing and final quality inspection, ship date is planned and shipping capacity is booked. Based on the cancel date and order completion dates, plan is made for feeder vessel and the connecting mother vessel which is reaching destination before cancel date. This vessel plan is done by shipping department. Export merchandiser shall coordinate with shipping and documentation department to make vessel planning. Let us now move on to quality checks. Quality assurance will start with giving necessary quality specifications to fabric and trim vendors. The fabric is checked for patent defects through fabric inspection. The fabric is checked by well-trained checkers who will spot the patent defects and segregate second quality fabric. Some exporters do have in-house testing lab to randomly check latent defects in the fabrics received from the suppliers. The cut pieces are checked for quality of cutting by comparing them with pattern parts. Cutting quality can be evaluated in compliance with pattern parts. Good quality cutting is important for good sewing quality. During process or during production inspection is done by roaming quality checkers in the production lines. They randomly check production pieces for quality. End of line checking is one major quality gatekeeping point. All the pieces sewn or screened for quality at the end of production line before they are sent to finishing. Required pieces are rectified. This is one important quality gatekeeping point. Each and every piece is thoroughly checked for defects in the finishing stage. Stain removing and mending are the major activities in finishing stage. Each piece is checked for defects and presentability before ironing and packing. Export merchandiser shall work in close coordination with quality teams to ensure quality control and assurance of 
garments produced. Final statistical audit is the final check done by the buyer's representative. Pieces are selected as per the statistical audit plan based on packed quantity. A buyer's representative will give passed inspection certificate only if the packed order passes quality audit. This is the final quality check in the factory before the goods are sent for shipping. Export merchandiser shall coordinate and facilitate the final statistical audit process. The last module deals with vendor compliance. Vendor compliance to vendor code of conduct is an important process to get orders from the buyer. If a garment factory has to get orders from specific buyer, then it is essential that the factory is inspected and rated for its suitability to produce orders for that buyer. Once a factory gets rating and approval to do a particular buyer's orders, the factory is expected to maintain the code of conduct of the buyer. The code of conduct is primarily related to human resource practices and also to infrastructure. Vendor compliance is very particular on HR practices. It requires that the vendor does not employ child labor and vendor pays minimum wages, provide safe, ventilated and well-lighted working place. A vendor should provide safe drinking water, clean toilets, first aid facility and training and fire exits and fire drills and most importantly crushes. Vendor is expected to provide safe infrastructure. For example, cutters are to be provided with safety metallic gloves. A vendor is expected to possess a state of art machinery required to produce world class products. Export merchandiser has an important role and responsibility in ensuring that compliance to the vendor code of conduct. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit you have learnt about the role and functions of a merchandiser in an export house. Thank you.